August uh, Falcher, Minister, and I too is raising matters of greyhound welfare in the Agricultural Committee today or yesterday. And today I'm also going to uh, speak on the matter of animal welfare, and particularly in the greyhound sector, and in opposition to this increase in funding of 2.4 million euro to the greyhound industry, which brings the amount of public funds that they will receive to 19.2 million. And I understand, and there are members here today, and they're rightly saying the importance of the greyhound sector to the local economy, and to, particularly for rural jobs. However, it can't be denied that the attendance levels at Greyhound race meetings have dropped by 55% since 2008. So, I'm no expert, okay, but an industry that's faced with that type of decline in interest surely has to stop and ask themselves, what's going on? Why are people turning off from what we have to offer? And I'm no fan of Greyhound racing. Personally, don't. It's not my... my bag. I don't like rugby either, but at least rugby players get a choice in the matter of participating. But I do know a lot of people who love greyhound racing. And I know a lot of people who've attended racetracks as part of their work outings and social gatherings. And I'll tell you one thing that continues to come up as to why those type of social gatherings are becoming less popular in workplaces and for communion parties and confirmation parties and birthday parties. And it's down to people being turned off by the issues of animal welfare. And I'm sure positive that the majority of greyhound owners treat their animals very, very well. But we cannot ignore that we have very serious issues around animal welfare in this country, and particularly in the industry. In 2009, on the back of a disgusted greyhound breeder that turned whistleblower, the Sun ran a story about unwanted retired greyhounds being shot with bolt guns for as little as 10 euros. In 2019, RTE broadcast an expose called Running for Their Lives that showed that in the 10 years, very, very little had improved on the situation. And despite protestations by the Irish Greyhound Board about that programme, the Broadcasting Authority dismissed the complaints and found that the programme was fair, impartial and balanced. And a year on, and yes, the RCE will say that the situation has improved since that show, that they're ring-fencing funding for animal welfare, that they're implementing a traceability system, that they're setting up care centres and working with animal welfare organisations to rehome the retired greyhounds. However, there are still concerns regarding that industry and any public funding that goes to an industry the public has a right to know that it comes with full transparency, accountability and the highest possible standard of animal welfare. Because the 10% care fund that we keep hearing about from RCE, it includes the cost of setting up and managing the traceability system. Now, anyone in industry can tell you that traceability, if that's a requirement of your industry, that's an operating cost. That's not an animal welfare cost and it shouldn't be coming from the animal welfare budget. And it's also vital that when this public traceability system goes up, that it will be completely publicly accessible. That the greyhound will be followed from birth to retirement to death. There needs to be an independent rigorous inspection system of all greyhound breeders with regular reporting in a timely manner on, again, a publicly accessible database. And while I would much rather that the RCE code of conduct was put on a statutory basis, the bare minimum that we should expect is that any individuals who are involved in the receipt of or distribution of the money that comes from that care fund, which is public money, should be in full compliance of the RCE code of conduct. And I would hope that if evidence emerges, and I would recommend people maybe do a bit of Googling to show that there are people out there who are not in compliance with the code of conduct, then they should be removed from any role involving the management or receipt of the animal welfare fund. And that includes breaching the code of conduct in relation to the sale or export of greyhounds to countries that do not have similar or higher standards of well animal welfare. And I also find that it is ridiculous that we're giving public money to an industry that deliberately overbreeds and then praises themselves for using the same public money that we've given them to overbreed to address the consequences of the overbreeding. It's completely inappropriate that thousands of greyhounds are bred every year only to be then sent to shelters for rehoming, including transporting them across the Atlantic to the US, and what that might do for carbon footprints. 
Greyhound breeders are repeatedly given permission for their bitches to breed in excess of what is in recommended and set out in law under the Welfare of Greyhounds Act. There absolutely has to be a cap on the number of greyhounds being bred. It is simply unsustainable to produce 6,000 dogs every year and then expect to find homes for them. These animals live for 14 years. Where are all these dogs going? Where are we rehoming them? Because yes, we all know greyhounds make great pets. They are beautiful animals, but they're sight hounds, so they need particular requirements. So I'm saying to you, Minister, the greyhound industry has a choice. They can clean up their act. They can implement a humane breeding policy. They can have full traceability and accountability, or they continue with this business as usual approach. And all that's going to happen is more and more people are going to get turned off from the industry. They are turning away in their droves and they're turning away because of the animal welfare issues. So for those of you who are interested in the jobs, and I get that and I get it's important for rural jobs, you need to clean up your act. You need to address the animal welfare. That's the only way that this will be sustainable. Public money cannot come without standards and without the evidence to date. I cannot justify any increase in funding to the industry. And I agree with Senator Howey. There are animal welfare organisations who are doing incredible work on a, on a pittance. I know others spoke for more longer than I did. And they could do with the 2.4 million. Uh, 